Can, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Graham Basham. I'm chairman of the um, Waste and Energy Group uh, for Chamber of Commerce. Um, we were delighted when we were asked to um, uh, actually introduce uh, Professor Connett. Um, having read some of his material and uh, seen some of the work that he's done, um, I'm delighted to do that. Um, we, at, on the committee that I sit on uh, for Chamber of Commerce, uh, we recognise the uh, complexity of the issues r surrounding uh, the waste uh, situation. Uh, not just in Guernsey, uh, but throughout the world. And uh, we're not actually here tonight to talk about the uh, solid waste proposal. Um, we're here to understand the zero waste concept. And I think the thing that struck me most uh, about uh, Professor Connett's um, work was the fact that while we all recognise the three R's um, of uh, uh, to reuse, recycle and reduce, um, Paul actually also introduces a fourth R, which is one of responsibility. And that's certainly something that Chamber feels uh, it has a responsibility for, to be part of uh, some of the solutions uh, to uh, the reduction and reuse and recycle. Um, I'm going to read um, Paul's biography. Um, you have to excuse me, I'm taking it off of uh, an email I received. Um, Paul is actually um, from, from the UK. Um, he graduated from Cambridge University and holds a PhD in chemistry. Um, he went on to Dartmouth College and in 1983, 1983 he taught chemistry at St. Lawrence University in New York where he specialised in environmental chemistry and toxicology. He retired in May 2006 and over the past 20 years his research on waste management has taken him to 49 states in the US and 52 other countries where he has given approximately 2,000 pro bono public presentations, and tonight is one of those. <coughs> Ralph Nader said of Paul Connett, he is the only person I know who can make waste interesting. And I certainly, having spoken to him lunchtime, <laughs> can assure you of that. Uh, he has authored six peered articles on dioxin and numerous other articles on waste management. His most recent publication, for those of you that are interested, is one on zero waste for sustainability in a book published in Italy in 2009, entitled Reduce, Reuse for a Happier Life. On the 12th of January this year, Paul gave an invited presentation to the Division of Sustainable Development at the United Nations, which I can assure you was received very well. His talk was entitled Zero Waste, a Key Stepping Stone to Sustainability. And I think sustainability is something that we should all be aiming for. And without further ado, I'll hand you over to Paul Connett. What I would say is that um, the, the intention is that Paul will speak for um, an hour and a quarter, Paul, and then we'll take questions afterwards. The aim is to uh, have you out by 9.50. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Graham, for that introduction, and thank you all for coming tonight. This is an absolutely splendid attendance. Thank you. Um, I was asked to ask if there are any deputies in, in the House, and if they wouldn't mind just putting up their hands so we can get some kind of idea. And I can't see with these lights, unfortunately. Looks like about 10. Well, thank you. Thank you also for coming. Uh, you have a real responsible decision to make on this, on this issue. Uh, Graham did mention the word responsibility, and, and that is a key word. We're talking about individual responsibility, community responsibility, uh, corporate responsibility, um, and academic responsibility. We're going to need everybody in, in the biggest challenge that's ever been thrown at us since the Industrial Revolution, and that is how to develop a sustainable society. And we can't leave that to waste experts 
or even, even specialists. We need everybody involved in this completely. And uh, as we're on letters, I would, I would say that there are, there are four C's on this issue. One is common sense, another one is community, another one is creativity, and another one is children. Uh, children, I think, are more creative than adults, and we need their creativity for the future. And I would say that I've been kept pretty busy for 25 years, largely because I come into communities. Citizens have already worked out, because it is common sense and action, what they need to do. But by and large, they get put down because they don't have qualifications. They're not supposed to be experts and so on. So I come in with the PhD, and all of a sudden, people will listen to me. Uh, and then, then they can go back and, and have a dialogue with the citizens, I hope. Anyway, just to, to recap, yes, I first got involved in 85, and you've heard that, in 52 countries, 49 states in the United States, seven provinces in Canada, and 189 cities in Italy. Uh, there are all the cities in Italy I've spoken. And as I tell you Italians, there's two reasons I keep coming back to Italy. One is vino rosso, and the other one is Italian creativity. We really need creativity. And one, one would wonder what Leonardo da Vinci would think if he was taken to the tipping pit of a large incinerator uh, and, and told that that stuff in there was stuff we bought yesterday. And what are we going to do with it? We're going to destroy it. We're going to burn it. Um, yes, we mentioned this, and it was, that was probably the most exciting uh, presentation I've given in 25 years, largely because of the very positive reaction that came both from the chair of the meeting, the, the chair of the division, and, and the hundred or so delegates that were there. And the concept of zero waste was new to them, but they quickly realized that this really was, a, a could become a very important stepping stone to sustainability, and, and that was exciting. And also, and I hope you'll find the same thing, my message tonight is a very positive message. I mean, I'll spend a little bit of time towards the end saying why incineration is a bad idea, but I'll be spending most of my time trying to persuade you that the alternatives that we're talking about is extremely positive and very exciting, and hopefully you'll want to do that um, instead of building the incinerator. And I don't have any axe to grind here, other than I am very interested in sustainability. I mean, bottles and cans lost their appeal some time ago, uh, but I keep going because I think this is uh, the stepping stone to sustainability, and that is incredibly important. And if we can do it with the lowly world of waste, then, then that's terrific too. I thought you might be interested in some of the islands I've spoken in. Uh, Guam in the South Pacific, Hawaii also in the South Pacific, all four of those islands there. Um, Ireland and Northern Ireland, the Isle of Man, went there twice, told them not to build the incinerator, they did build it. Mauritius, I told them not to build it and they haven't. Um, Prince Edward Island already had an incinerator, but they're now doing great things with recycling and composting. Puerto Rico wanted to build many incinerators, but they haven't built a single one. St. Martin wanted to build an incinerator, and they haven't. And uh, Sardinia, Sicily, and Ventotene in, uh, in Italy. I think Ventotene is even smaller than Guernsey. Uh, they closed down an incinerator there. Okay. So my talk tonight, uh, I've got a few words about sustainability. Ten steps towards zero waste. Zero waste progress around the world. You know, 25 years ago, we were talking about these kind of things. We didn't use the word zero waste then. We talked about intensive recycling and composting. But a lot of what we were saying was theory in those days. But the, the, after 25 years, a lot of that theory is now happening. And to, to continue to pretend that we're pie in the sky when we've actually got cities like San Francisco, which are up to 72% diversion, and, and communities in Italy and Spain that are over 80% diversion in relatively quick time, uh, it's rather silly. I mean, it's, it's actually happening. Arguments against incineration, linking zero waste to, to sustainability, and finally, back to the big...